about how you can calculate rotational inertia. And we talked about how inertia is dependent on how much mass you have, but also where that mass is located with relationship to the radius of, uh, of your spin. Okay, remember? We took the meter sticks and you tried to balance them. Why was the, the meter stick with the clay on it, why was that so much easier to balance than the meter stick without? More mass. <laughs> Correct. Right? The more mass there is, the easier it is, for the more tendency that it has for it to just stay right there. The more mass there is, the more inertia it has. And so if it's at rest, it just wants to stay at rest. Okay? But today, we're going to take a look at this rotating pipe system as well. And so up here we have a piece of PVC pipe. It has a pretty small radius. We have a string attached to it. And the string goes over this pulley. And if we, I'm going to show you just this first. If we take this mass on a string and we allow the mass to pull this, I think this is already spun the wrong way. allow this mass to pull, to fall, and pull this pipe around and allow it to spin. When it does, because it starts off not spinning, and we want to change it into spinning, you can see how easy or hard that is to do. Okay? So are you ready? Yes. Alright. So we're just going to let this fall. That was pretty easy to spin, wasn't it? Yeah. The radius is very, very small. This doesn't have a whole lot of mass, and so it doesn't have very much inertia, and so it's easy to change its inertia, right? But if we change the radius of this, kind of like we change the radius of anything else. Hey, who do you got? Claire Cardona. Who's that? That's her. That's her. Sorry. <laughs> Okay, so I'm going to change the radius of this by adding more up here. Is it just the wider radius or like in addition to the more mass that makes it spin slower? Well, this is a good question. There is some more mass. Yeah. So now we've added mass and we've increased this radius. So what do you think is going to happen to this as it spins? Will it behave just like the other one did? No. What do you think, what do you think will be different? It'll go down slower. Think it's think the mass will go down slower? Yeah. Okay. What else will be different? Gotta watch your this? head when it goes. Right, yeah. Are you ready? Okay, here we go. Okay. So you can see that this definitely spins what, faster or slower than it did before? Slower. Slower than it did before. And we can continue this, we can even add a little bit more radius and a little bit more mass by adding these little caps to the ends. And you can see now, as this velocity changes, as this angular velocity changes, what's it doing? Okay, and so what do you call that? There's angular acceleration. Do you think there is more acceleration like this or less acceleration like this compared to when there was nothing on the top? Well, Where's the acceleration more? Do you think? Without the cap. Without the cap, maybe? Okay, so do you think this is going to spin faster or slower than the second one? Uh, slower. slower. Maybe slower? Okay, let's see. A little slower, a little bit more difficult to get started. Okay, and if we if we put this on our graph and we could use the the um, GLX or the Spark to show you velocity versus time, you would see a graph of the yeah, angular acceleration. 
And then you can look at the slope of that graph and see how that changes. Okay? So this is very much like any other shape in terms of inertia. Inertia is, is mass times radius squared whole of the different parts, right? And if this radius increases and the mass increases, then you have more inertia. So it's going to take more to get it to change what it's doing. Right? If this is at rest, it's going to stay at rest. It's going to take more to get it to spin. Right? Any questions about this? Okay. The next demonstration that we had last class time that we talked about was our wheel, our bicycle wheel. Right? And this, being a single object, can rotate about lots of different axes. Right? It could rotate this direction. It could rotate this direction. It could rotate about this axis. It can spin on many different axes. And certain axes are going to distribute this mass differently, so it's going to be easier in some places than others. But once it is spinning, it wants to just keep on spinning. Okay? If we spin it this way, if it's straight up and down, it wants to kind of stay like that, which is kind of nice. If we spin it this way, it wants to stay spinning. And we can spin it this way. And we can put it here. And like a top, it has a lot of rotational inertia. And it just wants to keep on spinning. Okay? It has this, this wheel has a lot of mass. And most of that mass is spread out from this axis, which gives it a lot of inertia. So once it does start spinning, then it just wants to keep spinning. This is energy that we could store and use for something else, which is kind of cool. What kind of energy would this be? Kinetic energy. And this is specifically rotational kinetic energy. This kind of little wobbling that it's starting to do, especially as it slows down, you'll see it wobbles even more. Do you remember what that's called? Oh, um, cat, cat rotation. It's called precession. 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 But it spins for a very long time. inertia it has, and, and so then it's easier to change its position and gravity will just torque it on over. Just coming up. There we go. So we'll try to protect it a little bit. Alright, the last example that we want to talk about today with rotational inertia is our little turntable here. So I need a volunteer. Okay, Aiden, okay, come on. Oh. Do you remember this? No. Yeah. <laughs> no. What is it? What? You're going to have to dance on this. I have to dance? Okay. I'm really. You are. Now, there's several axes that we can spin about, right? Um. You can do the Michael Jackson spin in the, this direction, like if there was an axis from the top of Aiden's head down through his feet, we could spin him around that way. If you've ever done a somersault, you're rotating in a different axis. There's an axis through your hips. Okay? Or if you've ever done a cartwheel, there's an axis through your belly button and you're rotating in that direction. All right? And we can spin faster or slower in those different axes because of our mass distribution. Now, Aiden's probably about 50, 55 kilograms, maybe. And I'm going to give him these mass bars, and this is one kilogram each. So put one of those in one hand, one of those in the other hand. Okay? And so I haven't really changed his mass very much. I've added two kilograms <laughs> to him. All right? But we're going to try this little activity. So, Aiden, what you're going to do is you're just going to hold your hands at your side, 
and I'm going to spin you, and then when I get out of the way, I want you to take your arms out and see what happens. Okay? Alright, so yeah, you might want to leave that, right? So we're going to spin her and don't fall off each. Okay, you got to stay on it. Okay, go ahead. Oh, whoa. What? <laughs> How did that happen? You need some grease. You stopped? Should we, should we try the other way so you're not so dizzy? Don't look down because then you're going to end up. Okay, go ahead. Okay. okay. So, what happens when he takes his arms out? Stops. He stops. His mass isn't changing. He's increasing his radius. But he's increasing the radius. Okay. Let's start this way. Okay. And I'm gonna spin you around. And then, when when you're ready, then you just bring your arms in. Okay. No whacking, Miss Jenkins. I don't want to whack. <laughs> Rotational inertia, which then changes your your speed. Okay, that's pretty cool. 